Welcome, friends, to Tanks Up, the podcast all about video games and beer. One of your hosts, Ben, here with Adam. Uh, hi. And Lucy. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Um, we're going to do a little episode this week. Um, we're all getting prepared for Bristol Craft Beer Festival, which is coming up this weekend. It will have been the previous weekend by the time you hear this episode. Because, of course, we plan these things incredibly, incredibly well. Um, we've probably got some games to talk about. Let's just open some beers. Lucy, what are you going to be drinking yeah, this evening? I'm not I'm not messing about this week. Uh, I'm going for a big one. I'm going for a Brew York uh, Texan Barbecue Export Stout. Um, nice. It's, uh, it's, well, it's called Collabora 8, as in the number 8. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, instead of... A-T-E. Um, it is a 11% Texan barbecue export stout. Uh, smoky, sticky barbecue sauce goodness brought together in a big stout. Um, and yes, this was for their 8th birthday. Uh, probably a few weeks ago. I don't know. Uh, basically okay. this year. Hmm. Um, we're turning 8 and we're celebrating in style. We've brewed three brand new birthday beers that will delight your taste buds. Collaborate is a collaboration, could have guessed that, that combines <laughs> the knowledge and expertise of eight different breweries. Um, doesn't mention which ones are involved, um, but that's a lot. Um, and yeah, their other birthday beers were called Participate and Appreciate. Nice. Um, none, none of them called Listen. Uh, that'll Stop. be in two years. Yes. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Mm-hmm. I, I did. I think I thought I'd try and bring it up to see if Brew York's uh, shop tell us uh, what the other breweries are. No, 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 no it doesn't. Their flavor okay. text, I think, is exactly the Still same. As you've just, oh no! Mystery. Sorry, sorry. I've just completely glanced over. I'm so tired today. <laughs> um, Amundsen, Elusive, Fierce, Fine Ales, Lakes Brew Co., Siren Craft Brew, Umbard, and Thornbridge. Hmm. I mean, that sounds like too many cooks, but those are some good uh, breweries. So, <laughs> just one person, uh, like just maybe anyone... this hop, just maybe just this <laughs> yeah. amount of that hop. Okay, well maybe this mm. malt blend mm. to go with that hop. Okay, there's one person gets one line in the recipe each as they move through it. <laughs> um, nice, nice. Um, I'm going to open mine because I've also got a birthday beer. Um, this is Verdant's tenth birthday. Beer mm. um, called My Second Rodeo. Um, as with Verdant, doesn't have a huge amount on the can, but um, it's 8.4% double IPA. It has got mosaic and nectaron in. Um, I was going to have a look at something to tell me some more about it, but I don't have a huge amount. And Untapped seems to have a description that may have come from Verdant. I don't know. Is it user generated? I've got no idea. Tenth uh, birthday, double IPA, hundred percent mid firm dry hop in this pubster uh, wall of sound approach. And what a wall it is! Okay, I mean it gives me nothing almost. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get that one cracked nice. open. And Adol, what are you drinking? Uh, I've got um, a beer from Baron. Nice. Say three point six percent. Uh, Pale Ale, it's called Trust Issues. No. (laughs) And it's got a lovely (laughs) trusting bizarre art as per usual. Mm. Um, A hazy low strength pale at only 3.6% hops with HBC 586 and Azaka. Flavor bang for your booze buck. Uh, It's got HBC 586, Azaka, um... Extrapel, wheat, oat, and dextrin malts, WHC saturated, and um, the nerdy bits. After trusting my faithful fermenter chiller with too much, it went wrong and killed the whole brew. I haven't been able to trust it fully since, hence the name. This brew was mashed at 71 degrees for a big final body, dry hopped at a generous 14 grams per liter with two huge hops, punchy for its strength. Nice. Nice. Yes. I, I had was... a kernel table beer yesterday. Uh, um, and, uh... Three point one percent. Just so flavorful. Mm. Mm. Oh, kernels the best. Yeah. yeah, they make some of the best table beers. Yeah. Uh, what was the one you had? Adult three point four, three point five, three point six, wasn't it? Three point six. Okay. 
good, good. Nice. Uh, Lucy, we'll roll back round to the stout. Yeah, yeah. Um, poured it when I held it to my nose. Just after I poured it, even there. It's just like, ooh, get that light smoke, like, tickled the back of my throat. Um, it's definitely getting that good old barbecue. Good. Roasty. Nice. Smoky. Kind of a aroma. Um, it, knowing Brew York, I'm pretty sure they haven't gone too over the top with the smoke um, mm-hmm. in terms of the taste. So it feels like it'll just be sitting there. It's a nice underlying note, but we'll see. Mm. Oh, well, I'm in my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. Um, oh, it's bitter, which I like. Mm-hmm. It's um because when you're looking at like sticky, sweet barbecue kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, you're thinking, oh, is that going to be too much on the sweet side? Maybe a bit cloying, but this is very bitter. And I like that. Yeah, um, I, I suppose you sort of tend to think of Texan being a little bit more deeper and bitter. Not it doesn't have quite that sticky sweetness to it. Mm-hmm, At least what mm-hmm. we get over in the UK. I've never been to Texas, so I've never yeah. experienced mm-hmm. anything there. Yeah. Because uh, on the back of the can, um, the little you know diagram, uh, it's definitely well. It's not all the way over at sweet, so it's probably more like maybe three fifths uh, okay. sweet. They're probably saying, but um, uh, but yeah, it's 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 not overly sweet at all. Um, it's definitely Good. leaning into that, you know, more those that malty uh kind of backbone, the roasted malt and like the smoky smokiness. It's definitely leaning way more into that than like, you know, very thick and viscous and sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, Because when you first take a sip, it's like, ooh, that's a that's a decent mouthfeel. That's a decent amount amount of body, but it, the, the main body, it's it's a lot thinner. Um, yeah. Not in a bad way. It's, it's still very fulfilling and you know satiating, and complete in that sense. It's still got that you know decent amount of body, but it's not as um, not overly viscous, especially for eleven percent beers. Some of them just go way too. You know, thick and um, viscous, but this this mm. isn't at all. It's um, it's not thin, um, but it's quite. It, it's got a nice um, flow to it. Um, Good. But yeah, the yeah, just dark chocolate. Um, you know, smokiness, roastiness. It's 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 very good, and it, it feels like a very well balanced beer. Like just, I think I think the closest i could probably think of is like some of lervig's like big mm. big uh big stouts that are just like you know or, or like anything from um uh scandinavia or you know eastern europe um yep is it pohala or something like mm-hmm. that um their stouts where it's just like you know big you know bold bitter export stouts and it's like this is this is really good um so yeah, I I was a bit like mm, when you were talking about sticky sweet barbecue in a stout, I'm just like mm, it's probably less than what I want, and they've given me less of that and more of just a really big bold, uh, you know, very bitter stout. So nice. I'm very happy. I'm very Good. very very happy. Brew York make me happy like this. Good. I know. And we we've talked yeah. about Brew York and their smaller beers versus their bigger beers and usually the bigger beers are almost always uh, a yeah. hit so if, if it's not a stat i'm not gonna pick it up from new york i'm just like i don't even bother <laughs> it's like you you do something uh very well and you know stay in your lane <laughs> yeah that's fair that's fair um, yeah. I, and i suppose almost verdant sort of staying in their lane uh ish um you know we get a lot of nice double ipas from from verdant yeah. um i'm quite bunged up so I'm not getting oh. much on the nose at all because why would I? Um, of course, when hey, I pick up a or... big beer, um, I don't know. I no, mm. no idea. Mm. Um, I felt a bit. I, um, for those of you listening, I had the snip last week, um, and I've just felt a bit like the since. Um, 
don't mm-hmm. think it's anything to do with it. I think I've just picked something up as well. Yeah, um, just a little <laughs> bit, bit run down. Kind of, there. Yeah, just a little bit run down yeah. as well. Got a lot of yeah. work. Managed to bag a 1.3 million pound project. Nice. Uh, yesterday, so like I've just been fucking working my ass off. So yeah, I'm just fucking knackered. Um, and yeah. with that has come. Mm. So it accumulates. Unfortunately, yeah. I can't smell my beer. I'm getting nothing. Nothing at <laughs> all. <laughs> Hopefully the flavour comes across enough. Mm, okay, um, it's it's a little lighter in colour than I would expect. Sort of a verdant double IPA. I expect it to be a little more orange. It comes across a little more orange on the camera. Actually, it's a bit more straw colour um, in, mm. in in person, but it is a solid block. Um, but it is a lovely flavour. It's very subdued for a double IPA as well. But maybe that's a little bit of just what I'm experiencing. Mm. It's very smooth. Like Verdant just managed to get that quality in almost all of their beers. Like that water quality, that smoothness, that kind of medium body, the slickness to it. Um, but I'm getting a little... I suppose it's almost like sort of sort of light stone fruits. There's a little bit of kind of like peach in there. There's a little bit of nectarine in there. It edges in towards something that's a little bit more creamy, perhaps, as well. I can't remember what the hops were. Um, oh, mosaic and nectar on. Um, so there's something in there that's just a little more creamy. It's just sort of lifting it. It's not like a, you know, it's not coconut with sabra or something like that. But there's just this lovely, oh, yeah. lovely quality. To it, I think but, I get that from like mosaic a lot of the time, mm, like mm. soft and pillowy. Uh, yes, yeah, it is very pillowy, absolutely. Mm, um, and lavender, yeah. and there is a bit of bitterness on the end as well. The beer kind of nice. peaks and troughs, so you get that lovely kind of stone fruity, sweet, slightly sweeter flavour. You then kind of level out and then drop a little bit into something that's a bit deeper and a bit more bitter. But it's not pushing through quite so much at the moment. So we'll probably neck this and see how well it um how well That's it lasts through the beer. Ails, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Um, <laughs> I don't think I told you when I uh, came back from camping a couple of weeks ago. My freezer, um, my fridge was just off um, when we got back. The, the, all the socket run was just had just blown. Um, so oh, we no. had to chuck everything away in the freezer. Mm. And when when I realised, I'm like. <gasps> I bet there's some Jägermeister in there and it's probably all gone really warm and horrible. Mm. And I opened it, I'm like, oh, there's not. Thank I, I must have drank it all. Amazing. Don't care about the food. <laughs> Just as long as, my, as long as there's no Jägermeister that's been absolutely ruined uh-huh. in the freezer now. Um, but good. Um, Adol, what comes to you for the Baron? Yeah. Um, so it's got a lovely sort of yellowy straw color. It's a bit hazy, but it's quite, it's a little more see-through mm. than you might yeah. tell. I was about to say that looks quite... Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. It's got mm-hmm. lovely um sweet fruity notes um on the um like a light tropicalness and maybe a hint of citrus on the nose. I mm. poured with almost no head. Um it's got uh, the nose is yeah, like a little bit of tang and a bit of sweet. It's quite um effervescent. So that I cope. You, you can tell it's slower ABB. ABB. ABV. The right order of those ABB. three letters. Um, ABV. Yeah. You, yeah. Um, average volume by bottles. What is it? Um, <laughs> Alcohol by yeah. volume. By volume, yes. Yeah. Um, I think we're all very tired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm, yeah. I'm bouncing back from all the marking. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm done marking. Cheers. Oh, yes. Amazing. Yay. Um, right. I uh I spent I the morning in Woo. in exam plagiarism <laughs> panels. To me. Um, to so <laughs> I'm not really done with the marks, if that if that makes sense. Um, right. right. But um, mm. yeah. Who knew there was so much like admin for university grades? There's like board of examiners <laughs> and plagiarism panels and anyway. Um, the beer's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. I'm actually so. I, we were talking about Colonel earlier, and they're like one of the few uh-huh. uh, reliable low ABV uh, brewers. Uh, I'm really impressed by this Baron. Um, if I pay attention, like I said, I can think I can tell that it's you know it's quite wet and thin because it's mm. a low ABV. 
but the taste is there. It's not like they said punchy at some point in the flavor text. I think punchy for its strength is exactly the last four words, and that's exactly what it is. I think it, it feels like, oh, yeah, this is a beer, <laughs> but it's still, you know, it's still, it feels like kind of what you want as like a pale table. So it's like, I'm getting okay. a sense of a pale ale, but I, it, it doesn't feel like I'm having a full on beer, um, like, like a full, like a big bodied beer, mm. um, but it, it's hitting the right notes for, ah, yes, I, I would love to have this at like, um, you know, like I'm, 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 it's the summer and I'm cheekily working in a, in a pub and I'm like, ah, you know, I, 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 I can't, I can't have a real pint, but I'd love to sip on these for a couple hours. Was it right? Like, it's a really good, refreshing, uh, beer. I think the, the nose is a bit more tropically than the, the actual taste. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, sometimes that, that that is the case yeah. with table beers. Well, they said there was dry hopped a bunch, right? So that's all. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah. Um. So here it's yeah it's a little, the tropicaliness is almost all gone. I'm getting a bit of a, a slight pine lemon, uh, note at the right before the finish, but it finishes Oops. just kind of generically bitter, and a little dry. Um, so I am coming back for small sips quite often, not just because I'm trying to decode the taste. Um, yeah, it's really good. Um, I, I'm curious if by the end of it, even now, actually having having it in my on my palate for a few minutes, I'm noticing the bitterness is coming through a lot more. It's feeling a lot more like a bigger beer, which is good. It mm -hmm. feels like I said, there's a that pineiness sort of started to come out. Um, and the tropicaliness is still not there, but it's yes, this is this is quite good. I, I this would this is like an ideal session beer, especially for this spring summer mm -hmm. transition. Great beer, nice, nice, good, yeah. good, perfect. Um, let's let's drink these and launch. I was going to say let's launch straight into games, but actually, I don't know how many games we we have to talk about this week. Um, but it's it's crept up on us. I know it's Bristol Craft Beer Festival in two days' time. It's not E three from today. Yeah, yeah, oh. I was, I was, uh... What? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. um, because, because, you know, just random podcasts that I listen to, they started talking about it, and I was like, oh. That thing. Um, yeah, because cause I, I think it was the PlayStation one that was like, I think it was after we recorded last week. Yep. And I just went on my YouTube, and there was like 600 channels live or something like that, and because they're all like reacting to it, mm. I was like, "Does this usually happen for state of plays?" And then it clocked on that it was like, "Oh yeah, this is like E three time, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and and like Jeff Keighley stuff." And then there's the Xbox one, I think, on like is it Sunday or Monday, Sunday, yeah, um, mm. Sunday, and yeah, it, yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's sad because usually I'd get excited for E3. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's just where I am in my life or if it's like the death of E3 has definitely... I think that's what it is. I think it's the fact that the death of E3 is like... It doesn't feel like there's one cohesive thing. Yes. Because I looked at like... um went on Eurogamer's website mm. um, and there was like a schedule or something mm. and there's like 70,000 different shows and uh, <laughs> because Eurogamer's site is awful with the ads, uh, the, the web page kept getting broken i was like okay i'm done i'm not even checking because i yep. don't care anymore right and it's like i don't get that kind of like excitement when it was like sony nintendo xbox all having their shows within like the space of 24 hours and um it feels like everything's a bit more broken up and stuff but um and i think i'd probably just get more excited about like the indie ones um that makes sense I just watch those at a later time, and yeah, because like the big budget, uh, like none of the f you know first party studios, the three big ones, are doing anything that I really care about at the moment. Um, Black Ops. If they're small, <laughs> sorry, Black, Black Ops. Oh, Black Ops six. Yeah. I'll still probably be playing um whatever the one <laughs> I'm playing <laughs> is Last called. Um, yeah. yeah, Modern Warfare uh, three three. Yes, Modern Warfare Three. Yeah. yeah. Um. Probably yes. Probably the third time Modern Warfare Three has existed. So, um. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I didn't like any Black Ops other than the first one, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um. 
uh, two was tolerable. The rest are all bad. Um, I say the rest like I've played any of the rest. I think I played Black Ops 3. I don't know what happened to 4, 5, and this is 6, apparently. We discussed yeah. it last yeah. week. So. Mm-hmm. so, yeah, um, yeah, E3, E3. I hope there's some... There'll always be small little things, mm-hmm. and I think those will probably be interspersed in the big shows as well. well so, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll keep an eye. I get, I get, get where you're wondering. coming from with the, 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 the sort of the non-collaborative nature of it. You know, you could kind of be mm-hmm. like, on it's, it's Friday, um, E3 has started, pull up whichever company YouTube page you want to see and you can just watch mm-hmm. all of them through through that day kind of thing and then you just go to the next one whether it's the e3 official yeah. channel or, or whatever everything was on the same stage everything or well, not quite the same stage but everything kind of rolled through at least digitally um for, for everyone but at the moment um guerrilla collective has just happened it happened earlier today um we've then Come got the that. guerrilla collective is like an indie showcase again oh okay um so because um, i saw day of the devs i think that's the one that i usually enjoy yeah um, day of the devs the is, most and watch later cause, absolutely yeah. day of the devs always then follows on at the well for the last few years has followed on from the summer game fest show it almost mm-hmm. comes straight mm-hmm. after it but we have right. from on friday tomorrow the access ability summer showcase don't know anything about okay. that summer games fest 2024 uh, Day of the Devs, and then a Devolver Direct. Devolver Direct is, is always the, absolute insanity. Is that the Keeley show? The Summer Games Fest is the Keeley yeah. show, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. We then have the Future of Play Direct, actually. This this tells me a little bit about them. Let's have a look. Oh, um, where did I just read that? A name, as I'm scrolling <coughs> through things, a, a name already. Um, flashed, up, flashed up in front of me. Um, Oh, maybe it's gone. it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. PC is gamer show, or is that a different one? So no. we have the um, oh, there we go. I've just found it. The Access Ability Summer Showcase yeah. is um, hosted by Laura Kate Dell from uh, oh, okay. Pogwetition yeah. fame, I suppose. Um, yeah. But I um, haven't seen her, uh, I haven't watched anything from her for a while, uh, so it might be interesting. Um, yeah, so Summer Games Fest, Dare the Devs, and then Devolver Direct. Then on the Saturday, you've got the Future of Play Direct. Um, a, a top secret sure showcase hosted by AI VTuber Melios the Android. Who Heard fucking me? knows? Yep, the Toonami inspired me? event will feature reveals from Trinket Studios and Studio Studio Pixel Punk, as well as many others. Um, <laughs> following that, there's the Wholesome Direct that's been on for a couple of years mm, as well. Yeah. Um, it's usually very good. So, like last year, they showed Vember unpacking and a few other games. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's too many. Like, just to have one massive so, seven mate, hour we, we're not show. finished. We're not finished. There's then the Latin <laughs> America Games Showcase. There's then the Women Led Games Summer Games Fest. And then there's the Future Games Show. So, the Future Games Show is Games Radar Annual Summer Event. Um, um, hosted see, by Arthur of- Morgan from Red mm-hmm. Dead 2. Or the actor, Robert oh, Platt. Okay, uh, and, I was thinking and, of like, is it like AI VTuber uh, <laughs> Arthur, Arthur Morgan coughing <laughs> through the entire <laughs> thing as he keels yeah. over at oh, the end? Oh, just like, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, Sunday, you've got the Xbox right. Game Showcase. Already exhausted. Yeah. Yep, Xbox <laughs> Game Showcase. Other stuff, but then you've also got the Black Ops Six Direct, which isn't part of the Xbox Game Showcase. It's being billed as a different thing, but happens directly after. So it's kind of that makes sense because, like, I mean, that would have been in planning from even before the acquisition probably Probably. happened. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then the only other one on that day is the PC gaming show, which Hmm. out of all of them is usually the I wouldn't say worst, but it's always it's always a little bit shit, isn't it? Mm. Where Devolver? Uh, Devolver are Are they having one? Yep, yep, yep. So Devolver were back. They just after Day of the Devs. Nice. Oh, okay. Um, and then to round everything out, the only show on Monday, Ubisoft Ford. Hmm. Oh, well, skip. Um, <laughs> did, are Nintendo having anything this year? There's or? nothing on the schedule that's on that I've got on Polygon and the one I've just looked on Kotaku as mm. well. They, they they mirror each other, right. basically. So there's nothing additional. Yeah, well, they might just um, be in their own drum, really. But um, I, I like the thought of, like, there's... A time where everyone gets together, and maybe this is a better 
better way to you know amplify smaller games like having like you know the the latin american games thing it's like here mm. is the showcase here is the hour here is a two hour slot for you mm. it's not going to be lost in the deluge of like say a bigger show like the xbox show or the sony show um so that's i'm a bit conflicted i, I guess it's all down to whether you know those developers actually see the fruits of you know they're laboring like oh we're gonna you know showcase our game here rather than like i don't know in august or something like that but i guess mm-hmm. like if a lot of eyes are on like e3 and everyone's in that mood um maybe people are, oh yeah whilst i'll wait for day of the devs i'm gonna mm-hmm. check out the you know women-led game show or something like that so yeah. so maybe um so somebody smarter than me is crunching numbers and it works out better for <laughs> everybody so yeah um well it's, it's again it's interesting yeah, it's you, usually get like, <laughs> you usually get like a bafta <laughs> show as well there's there's lots of kind of shows which actually when e3 was not necessarily a type but when it kind of moved a bit more digital i think we had even you know a lot more shows than we currently have now you know with nintendo mm-hmm. and playstation included ea as well bafta uh, did a, a like a game showcase and it's interesting to see where companies are the bigger companies maybe are pulling away a little bit from from mm-hmm. stuff like this mm-hmm. um and those smaller kind of collaborative groups are kind of coming in and taking their place you know you'd, you'd think devolver actually now are probably one of the bigger showcases even though they only show like four games a year mm. but just because mm. of the spectacle of of what yeah. devolver deliver each and <laughs> yeah. every year it is usually a bit of a highlight because it is just so different from from everything else um mm. but yeah lots of stuff i would think would be happening um i did just have a quick look on bafta's twitter or bafta games twitter account and they have retweeted a bioware tweet from five hours ago Mm. Just saying, exciting news, Dragon Age fans. Join us on June 11th for the first official gameplay reveal. And mm. going back to the schedule, there's no shows scheduled for June 11th. Mm. So again, are EA or Bioware themselves just going to put out a YouTube video? Probably. It's, you know, there's, there's so many of these kind of like, cool, we're just a company and they've just told us we can yeah. do what we like. So let's just build on this E3 hype and we'll put out our new trailer around this time. But just yeah. do it ourselves rather than be part of a show. Mm, mm-hmm. Makes sense and, to me. And I think you know, it, it, there's a part of me that is like, man, things will never be like they were before, and maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know, but you know, like, it is quite ironic the the, the companies who like you know started all these console wars. Who's gonna have <laughs> the best E3? Are now the ones like pulling out from it, like Sony mm, going a bit yeah. early, Nintendo well, not even being there. I mean, it is it is quite amusing. <laughs> like Sony Sony can't top like the E three from like three, no. four four, five years ago, where they essentially showed four games. God of War, um Ghost yeah. of Tsushima, yeah. The Last that of Us Part Two, one. uh what was the other game they showed? Was it four or was it just three, maybe? The but last they had like Guardian. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, there is definitely an E three where they showed the last Guardian and I imagine everyone went. Yeah, and that was a good one. Oh. It, yeah, was, a, was, a it was a good one. show piece. And Just it was like Kingdom game. Hearts or something. Or I was like, all these games, I don't give a crap about, but I'm happy for the people who are happy. Um, all the weeds. Yeah, like, and like, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the uh, you know the one where they actually absolutely bodied Xbox, um, 2013. And was that with um, the, the game sharing? one yeah they just, yeah. They just handed yeah because that was like all on the same day you know what i mean oh that's right um <laughs> yeah and well, i didn't Chuno think just Xbox handed had a... that that disc to adam yeah. boys the, the, or the, the yeah um the box yeah because when cool. when you're watching it um it didn't seem like xbox had the worst of shows but in retrospect when you look at it now and like what happened after with sony it was like yeah that was pretty bad um <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but um but yeah just just stuff like you know giant enemy crabs and stuff like that it's like those were golden moments. Um, <laughs> Historically uh, accurate I, giant enemy crab. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ubisoft should uh, just hold that torch now because I think in the most recent years, those were the, like the most cringiest of all of them. Um, 
But, uh, but they even, do like, love not even the cringy moments. Like, well, the good moments as well. In, interesting. It might be just to move into the games that we've been playing. Um, Ubisoft Forward usually open up with their newest version of Just Dance and have this big kind of like showpiece. Oh yeah, to, to leave yeah, the show and in, that's hilarious they? when they're all like <laughs> dancing and taking selfies yeah. and there's like yeah. randomly some panda on stage. And it's yes. like, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say weird yeah, mascots for no reason. <laughs> Um, yeah, but we've, everything's we've been pre-recorded playing. now, and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we've been playing Just Dance this week. Really? Um, I haven't. Yes. I've been sat on the sofa uh, watching the <laughs> watching the kids play it. But but Evelyn was just like, "Can I play Just Dance?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course you can." So we 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 put it on um, to find that I don't know if it's a, a, an annual thing or what the cyclical element of it is. But we got thirty days free, unlimited. So we just popped it. Because she's interested in playing it now, so she's got mm. like seven hundred plus songs that she can nice. oh, wow. kind of play to. And That'll tire her. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I was making dinner, <laughs> making dinner yesterday. Kim was still at work. I'm like, should we put just dance on? She's like, yeah. <laughs> and so Indy's just sort of stood in, in one spot, just oh, kind of like bless. bopping away. Oh. Never is trying to do all the moves with my phone in her in her hand. That's the way that it oh. controls. Oh, I was going to um, ask. Like, I couldn't remember how it worked. Oh. Mm. Oh, so yeah. basically it just tracks you have an app and you just sort of wave it it has a motion element right. to oh, it so it's much like, better so, than um, but, <laughs> connect or something well yeah. it, it, it's funny because some of the moves are like you, you know three arms that side and three arms and then Evan is like yeah I was going to say <laughs> yeah. it fully fully knows how yeah. to game it instantly <laughs> yeah. like you're meant to be dancing that's the point of this yeah. it's not just get the high <laughs> score she's like yeah but look at the high score <laughs> um, put her on ring for adventure Doing squats. <laughs> she can't fake that. Well, as soon as Kim got home, so I was like, "Right, come on, we're going. Let's 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 have a have a game." We both just realised like how unfit we are. Okay? <laughs> just like Jesus Christ, um, we've, we've, we've lasted one song, um, but like one Beyonce song that just fucking goes hard, and we're like, "No, no, just sit yeah, down again." Yeah. Now, thank you. No, yeah. let's put on some Coldplay, something a bit slower. <laughs> <laughs> just sit on the sofa and just wave the phone in the air yeah. a little bit. Like, <laughs> In my place, in my place. <laughs> oh, what what do you predict will be the um the song? Probably over the Black Ops Six trailer. Uh, that's probably Ooh. from like the eighties or nineties. That it's slow down. Yeah. When's Black 90s? Ops set? When's Black Ops Six set? Let's just to, just to give it just a d- in, like, d- Lucy's quiz for this week. Um. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which slow down song do you think will uh, feature prominently in this E uh, three? Maybe even be one more than one. Set in the early nineties. Early nineties. So, oh, okay. Well, okay. well, at least there's a rumor that it was set in the early nineties. I don't know. If... Right. It's gonna be MC Hammer. Uh, it's gonna be Stop Hammer Talk. <laughs> <laughs> they make this awful twee version Touches. of it. Just, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they do. I don't know Why whether they've done it, but obviously Simon and Garfunkel, um, Hello Darkness, my old friend, just <laughs> set oh. over like the top of just fucking the uh, very Vietnam one that you should have, which is oh. explosions in the fucking rice fields, kind of going off. You just be like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I think um, I don't know what effect you could have with a song from the nineties, just like the Spice Girls, just fucking pop in. Just I think it's gonna be <laughs> yeah, children's choir slowed down version of Soundgarden's Black Hole Sun. Oh, no, oh, no, don't fucking destroy that song for me. Um, I love children's choir part. Because that's exactly what it's going to be. Oh, no. Um, uh, in, in, in completely different news, I don't know whether either of you enjoy Soundgarden, but um, Chris Cornell does a fucking fantastic um, version of Nothing Compares to You. Oh, yeah. Um, just for anyone. I love that. It's very, very. I mean, good. Prince. Prince wrote that song. Prince yeah, did write that. Absolutely. His, yeah, his, his, yeah, his, his version's better than Sinead O'Connor's. Rest in peace. Um, Every... But yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Early Maybe it's 90s. gonna be crisscross and it's like nah. black ops when it's like not boots on the ground. And it'd be like everybody jump. Yeah. Jump. <laughs> Oh, and it's just them jumping out of planes <laughs> and out into vehicles. Yeah, yeah. And the the, the either, newest yeah. innovation is you can step on someone's foot. It's like a stun <laughs> yeah. kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the knife in the back, yeah, that's the... Uh, oh, they, 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 they go like yeah. deep 90s and it's just like Hadaway, Baby Don't Hurt Me or something oh, like that, isn't it? And every time it goes, yeah. don't hurt me. I, yeah. I'd, I'd be up for that, yeah. 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 It's better than like, well, well, it's not better, but like, 
In fact, it's probably worse, but there's always like an M&M track on the bucket, <laughs> unlike the uh, Call of Duty trailers. So, <laughs> so yeah, let's switch it up. <laughs> Definitely. Out of way. Go, like, mm. Yeah, Deep House or something like that for early 90s, isn't it? Just... Oh, Good. no. It, 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 Super it, it slow would be down. wild as if the trailer showed like someone playing, but from another person's <laughs> point of view where they're just like watching them and like occasionally saving them when they don't know it, and it's just Stan. <laughs> 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 you know what? That's probably already been in the trailer. From like, that sounds like something that may have already happened. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, though, I'd be surprised if it hadn't. Um, get us on. Introducing Stan team. mode. <laughs> you can bodyguard from afar. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, I, I don't know Three. what they're going to do. Let's. I, I, yeah. We have to watch it now just to see. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, it is. Because that's um, a Sunday. So, yeah, I might watch that. Um, because, mm, mm, yeah. yeah, we'll miss all the Saturday ones. Um, yeah, I might no, watch the Kiwi one we, and we can the just Xbox watch them on one. Our phones I'm the not fest. doing that. <laughs> the tents, yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> Um, a lot of I'm, no. um, so, uh, <laughs> like, Xbox is on for us at, um, yeah, six o'clock in the evening on oh. Sunday. Yeah, um, the, I like how Xbox are kind to us in the UK. Um, yeah. Yeah, nothing starts earlier than say four o'clock for us. So the the access ability summer showcase on uh, tomorrow and Friday starts at four, and then Summer Games Fest is ten p.m. I don't want to oh, stay there. Yeah. So I usually Kiwi shows run on for like forever. It's, it's set for two hours. And Dare the Devs comes oh, on straight okay. afterwards. So Dare the Devs is on at yeah, midnight. Dare basically. the Devs will be um, a uh, catching up on. Yeah, uh, maybe I could stretch to watch. The whole yeah, and then Devolver's on at one at one in the morning. No. Nah. So uh, we'll probably see Devolver Saturday morning before the following we come morning, to the, yeah. the beer festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, good, good. Let's let's move away from Not E3 uh, again. Today, is everyone calling it Not E3 again? Not E3. Um, yes, no, Not E3. Everyone's calling it Not E3 still. Um, but let's talk about some games that we've played. Yeah. Um, I, Can I start? We, absolutely. Can I start? Absolutely. Um, humanity. Uh, I bought it. On Steam, on sale, last year or mm. this year. I think it came out last year. Um, it's a game by the people who did like, uh, was it Luminous and, and Tetris Effect? Um, those guys, um, you know, very cerebral and very weird, quirky music, um, uh, to be expected, and humanity has that. Um, mm. But it's it's basically 3D Lemmings. Yeah, it's 3D Lemmings, and it's good, and it's um it's sort of got like a Katamari, uh, Demasi kind of like weirdness to it. Like you're this dog herding all these humans mm. around, and you don't actually know what's happening. And there's this like this this um you know this uh omnipresent kind of uh, spectral presence that is talking to you and just like why am i hurting all these humans around it's like oh silly dog you'll find out later yeah um yeah it's weird and i like that um it's got like really good like particle effects because it's basically Mm. spoilers for inside like (laughs) you know Mm. uh just a mass of humans like just bounded together uh floating through the through the sky but yeah it's it's 3d lemmings and I mean, I love Lemmings. Um, oh man! I... And yeah, this is like it's like a perfect puzzle game. Like everything, all the information that you need is you know right there on the screen within the game. Um, you have these different uh, you know interactions, same as Lemmings. Like you can uh, get them to turn in certain directions. You can get them to jump. You mm. can get them to you know branch off in different directions. You can. Uh, you know, the game gets like, um, it seems like very heady uh, material, but they <laughs> they start bearing weapons <laughs> after a certain point, and it's just like... Oh, I didn't get to um, that point. Because that's humanity, yeah, yeah, so... Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, re- it's really, really, really good. Um, yeah, and you can... And it's, there's like extra collectibles and things like that as well, isn't there? There's like mm-hmm. golden humans that you can... Yes. Mm. You can take a different path to go and pick them up. Yes. But that path might not be able to like loop back around to get you out of the thing. So you get the collectible and then come back and do the yeah. the puzzle as such. So it's yeah. interesting in 
um, uh, just the control scheme, but also kind of the flexibility, I suppose, of the, yeah. of the levels themselves that they've absolutely. It's very trial and error, um, yeah. and you know there are definitely certain, like I, I did one today where it's like this is certainly not the most optimal path, and some of it relies on a little bit of luck, but you know I I, I got it done. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a perfect level of like difficulty where it's not too easy. But you feel like a genius once you've uh, absolutely once you've figured it out, and um, probably the longest I've spent on a puzzle is like maybe maybe half an hour, where it's just like being, oh my god, how do I do this? But usually it's like, you know, maybe average ten minutes, five ten minutes to to figure mm. it out and do the trial and error, and right. you know, th- see what works. And um, yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, I mean, I'm playing it on Game Pass because it came to Game Pass. Because I was like, oh, this, you know, I remember buying it on Steam. It's like, oh, maybe I'll just, you know, give it a try on Xbox. Uh, achievements are always an extra incentive and all that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Um, and, you know, just it, it's easy because I can just, like, download it on my Xbox, play it on there, and also just, you know, on my Steam Deck. I was going to ask the Steam version. I can play it on Steam Deck over cloud. Uh, that's one way of doing it. So yeah, I've just been like plugging away at it a few levels a day, and it's it's great. It's great. It's fantastic. Love it. Nice, nice. Um, it mm-hmm. was I think a day and date PS Plus game. Oh, was it? Well. Oh, nice. So it's nice that it came nice. that it's come to Game Pass as well. Because obviously, maybe it's yeah. its year kind of. Exclusivity is out yeah. or something like that. So, because didn't that happen with Tetris Effect too? Didn't wasn't that? It like did. Day yes. and date same. Post, same. Yeah. Yeah. Same dev. Res Infinite Tetris as well. Is so same good. dev. It is. It is. Um, I was just trying to look at my trophies to see how far through I got. Um, I, think I, can, I can remember playing, but maybe only getting like ten or twelve puzzles in or something like oh, that. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just like I can't put it down. It's one of those where I'm floating in between games. Like I'm still. Chipping away at like Animal World and that uh, yeah. Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. I took a nice. breather from that because I was like, my brain is on fire. Um, mm. So I'll take a little break. Um, so yeah, bouncing around. But this is, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, enraptured me. But am I right? So in thinking... did Lorelei and Animal World. Mm. But I probably bounce between all of them. You know. Am I am I right in thinking there's a user generated set of puzzles as well? Yes. With yes. Yeah. It says beta, so I don't know how long it's been around for, but okay. But yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, dug into that, but that's that's cool. I always like it when, you know, devs uh, offer that option, giving the game a bit more of a mm. you know tail lifetime and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's just an excellent game, so recommend it. Nice. nice. Good. Good. Is there anything else you want to jump on today, Lucy? Uh, yeah, I'll briefly talk about, uh, I'm going to have to Google the name, because uh, <laughs> it's alliteration, and uh, there's four T words, I think it's Tiny Terry's Turbo Trip, I think that's right, Tiny, Tiny, Tiny Terry's, Terry's Turbo, Terry's Turbo, Turbo Trip. Trip, okay, yeah, that is a game, Um, it is, got a code for it, nice, and it is. Oh, it's adorable. YK. <laughs> Did you say it's adorable? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> it's it's got a it's got a really nice. Um, uh, it sort of reminds me yeah. of like a double fine game. Yeah. Like, yeah. But um. With that that little uh, bit of sort of donut county kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Aesthetic at least to it. Yeah. Like, yeah, and, yeah, it, yeah. and it's and it's really silly. Like um, the humor in it is really good. Uh, you basically play as Terry. And you start off, uh, the game opens when you're in, like, the job centre. <laughs> and nice. he's looking for a job. Um, and it's like, why does Terry want a job? He's like, I want a car. And they're like, oh, so you want a job? He's like, no, I just want the car. <laughs> and, they're like, and they're like, maybe you could become a taxi driver? And he's like, do I get a car? And they're like, yeah. He's like, okay, I'll do that. And then, um, <laughs> you know, the taxi rank is like, Maybe you should pick up fares. Maybe you should get like an extra seat for your car so you can pick up fares. And he's like, "No, I, I just, I just want, I just want the car." Um, <laughs> so I identify Terry a lot because Terry just wants uh, what he wants out of the job and not to actually do the job. Nice, yeah. <laughs> and he just, and it's like, um, it was like uh, there was a question in like the job center. He was like, "Do you want to get paid?" 
And he was like, yeah, sure, I'll get paid too. We <laughs> paid doing the job. And they're like, yeah, we'll put you down as minimum wage. And I was like, he's like, cool. He <laughs> just wants the car. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's got great, great bit of humour. It's, um, it's basically a mini open world. Because mm. uh, as soon as you like get out into the world with your car, because his his uh, objective is just to get to space in his car. <laughs> so interesting. It's a case of upgrading the car over time by you know going through this open world. You can drive, you can get off on foot and run about, um, and just you know speak with the weird and random townspeople and pick up small little quests and you know a lot of them are like little fetch quests. It's it's not. It's, there's nothing revolutionary re- revolutionary in the gameplay. It's um, it, it's just a you know small little. I wouldn't even say a sandbox because there's like there's no really like emergent gameplay or right mechanics where you can you know tinker with the world or anything. It's just a small little open world, um, which is refreshing because you open the map and it's like, oh, this looks like Saints Row One <laughs> in size, you know, rather mm. than uh, Assassin's Creed Origins uh, size, which mm. you know mm. barely even see. The- a fraction of and it's like oh this could probably be completed in like three or four hours if a hundred percent um so so yeah it's just it's it's, it's delightful it's cute it's colorful it's um it, it's it just reminds me of like you know a, a ps2 game even like small right. small little open world maybe like um gosh i'm, I'm trying to think of something that's not even as big as or, or as violent as GTA. Um, Did you play um, Alba? The photograph. Yes, yeah, maybe, something yeah. like that. Similar sort of size to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the the bird. Uh, yes. F- photography game that was great. Um, yeah, something like that, or 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 a short hike, or mm. or I played. Gosh, what's the uh, alligator crocodile game? Oh, you talked uh, about it. No, or didn't talk yeah. about it, mentioned it. Little something. Little little gator game, yeah. Mm. Like that, yeah. Um where you where you know, you're upgrading your um movement and traversal skills in this case, mostly the car. Um and just being able to get around a bit easier and a bit quicker. But yeah, something very small and bite sized like that. It's um it's great. So I recommend it. Nice. Nice, um, good. Yeah. Good. I wanna play some more of it. It's um, a bit I did... buggy and a bit glitchy. Okay. Um but that kind of added to its charm. <laughs> and mm. there's a button where it's like, oh, unstuck Terry. Because I like, you know, mm-hmm. got my car jammed into, you know, a bit of the uh, environment. So uh, so I think it knows it's a bit like, you know, mm. yeah. around the edges. But, I, it, but it's fun. I like really a good. game with an unstuck button. It tells me I can get to shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. got a very good trailer. As well, I think I saw it a couple yeah. of weeks ago when the the press releases for the game sort of started going around. Um, but yeah, it's got a very good trailer, good good sort yeah. of narrator over the top, and very much sort of tells you Terry's disposition. But the narrator asks the question, he's just sort of like, yeah. so it's it's, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't give a crap. No, no, doesn't give a shit. Terry. Absolutely, I love Terry. Absolutely. Terry is me. Terry is my um, spirit. Animal. I don't know if either of you played, but it made me um, that that game's uh, reminded me. There's a cat game. Which I just had a quick look for, which is called Little Key, Big City. Oh, you haven't yeah. talked um, about that. Um, ah, is that the one you I missed? Mm. Yeah, okay. yeah, the one you missed. Yeah, I, I, I completed that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, nice, yeah. good. Yeah, it reminds me of that. Yeah, <laughs> amazing, amazing, good. Um, I might jump in then, just yeah. for just for two minutes, uh, or so, just Your to talk about. Now. Um, oh shit! <laughs> um, I've been playing Songs <laughs> of Silence. Um, it uh-huh. is a it's a game I talked about a few months ago because I had a demo for it, but it is this kind of um, uh, what would you call it? Oh, it's, it's this not game, like an RTS game. It's it's kind of like a it's almost like the Banner Saga, something like that. Yeah, um, where you are experiencing yes. a story across a kind of a map, but Songs of Silence is a little bit more. I'd say not necessarily strategy focused, but it pulls a lot of strategy elements into it. The, the, something like the Banner Saga had a very strategic combat system to it. Mm-hmm. Songs of Silence has this kind of strategic, I suppose, uh, uh, overview 
to it. You know, you have turns, you can only move your armies around the map a certain amount of time um, or a certain distance um, and then sort of engage in battles. But the battles are essentially auto-played. Oh. You have a set of cards with different abilities on, which have timers, and you can play those cards onto the battlefield. So you can, you know, uh, uh, get some of your units to charge. You can refresh your units so you can give them sort of extra health and give them sort of buffs to if they die, they they might come back for a certain Wait, percentage. But you can't um, like you, control their. You um, don't control them. Absolutely yeah. not. You 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 get to a stronghold or a city or something like that and you're able to then either buy new units with the various different currencies that they have um what i have found interesting with the change from the demo to the main game is that in the demo i didn't get a sense that in the campaign of this game it's split up into chapters And the demo for the game made me think, cool, I'm building armies, I'm expanding my realm, I'm improving the cities and all those kinds of things, because there's cards that let you improve the cities and and stuff. Um, But actually in the campaign, I got to a certain point, and it's like, cool, that's done now. We'll move you to the next kind of area of the map and and make you do this kind of like story element to it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. It gets you to experience lots of bits about this game. But actually, I kind of just want this to be an open, like an open strategy sort of game, almost. Um, so I, I'm a little bit mixed on it at the mm. moment. Um, I'm only into, I'm right at the end of the second chapter. So I think there's five in total. Um, and I haven't explored any of the other elements. But it's still in early access. Uh, I don't know when it's suggesting it's uh, uh, going to be coming out. But it came out in early access last week, I think, or the week before, sometime in June. Um, So I'll play it a little bit more. It's kind of like Darkest Dungeon, where I'll play a little bit of the early early access game. I'll wait a few months and then jump back in after several patches or several kind of uh, 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 changes to it Mm. and then jump back into it when it's a full release just to see what those differences kind of are rather than say running all the way through the campaign now and completing that element of it um but i'm enjoying it it's very um like the the voice acting is very good uh the 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 sort of the, the aesthetic and the music and everything is very intriguing and it pulls you in uh but it's definitely kind of one where the actual play of it has been a little um what's the word i'm looking for which isn't too brutal because i don't want to be brutal in sort of what i'm saying but it's a little bit rote in kind of what you're experiencing you know it's like i'll move my army here end turn cool no one can attack me now i can attack them and i can ambush that army so i get the advantage you know you can game the game a little bit by understanding the system that's kind of working within it um, and with it being in a, uh, a kind of a campaign mode and having these story sections to it i can be like cool i'll just wait like two turns and i all i'm you know in a i'm in a town and all of my uh, units have healed right back up again and now i'll go and attack because there's no penalty to just sitting here for 30 turns. Mm. No one's attacked me. No one's taking anything down. You know, the game is saying, there's an urgency to this thing. It's like, just just play some turns, mate. Don't worry about it. Like, there doesn't seem to be there's a bit of a juxtaposition between the kind of yeah. what the story wants you to do and the actual element of gameplay to it. So, yeah, it's kind of... From the demo that I played, I was very hot on this. So as soon as I saw Kozer up, I'm like, yep, I want one of those. Great. I really want to play this. Um, and the actual experience of it, or at least the campaign experience of it, let's say. Uh, I need to spend a bit more time with it and see if there's other modes available at the moment to be able to, to jump into it. But yeah, that's not quite two minutes, four minutes, five minutes uh-huh. on Songs of Silence. You're right, you're right. Um, it's by um, a company called Chimera Entertainment, uh, which made a game called Word Wonders previously, or are they the publisher? Is it, is it a typing uh, game? Word Wonders is. Or is it, just a word game? it might not be a typing game. It might mm. be a move the tiles mm. type of game. Um, okay. Okay. But yeah, completely. I like a different. typing game. 
Give me more Titan games. Crypmaster was good. Oh, Crypmaster. Oh, I, I, need to get back to I, Crypmaster. Saw, I, I saw a um, news story, apparently. Um, if you, like, don't learn the uh, first move in the game just by, like, typing hit, yeah, like, the narrator breaks the fourth wall, and it's like, look, just type hit. <laughs> continue not to do it. Uh, it'll be like, um, well, I tried to tell you, but... Um, this game is not for you. I think you should just <laughs> refund it. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's definitely so, yeah, the tone of Grimmaster that I really enjoyed yeah, when yeah. I found the demo. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the humour in that game was great. Um, yeah, as I said, the gameplay didn't really evolve much, but the, the whole vibe and um, humour in that game is, is top-notch. So. Mm, mm. Nice. Mm. Nice. Um, Adol, you got anything you want to uh, chat about this week? I've kind of been busy with marking and stuff, so yeah. don't imagine much time to have done anything. Nope. Um, uh, uh, on the news, there's a rumor that the, they're um, they're definitely remastering Halo again, but the rumor is what? that they're considering PlayStation Five release. Do it. And so that's the thing I wanted to just... I like this. I like this. Like, I like PlayStation releasing their games on PC. Yeah. I like Xbox releasing their games on PlayStation. Make everything available everywhere, please. But are we, are we talking the first game? Are we talking just Halo? Halo is a... Halo we're Combat not Evolved. About, it, we're not talking yeah. about the Halo With, like, like multiplayer pack. as well. No, like a remaster oh, of great. Halo Combat Involved. Again, a re-remaster of this, but with... Um, potential that they're considering PlayStation release of Halo Combat Evolved re remaster. Yeah, get those servers up, multiplayer. Yeah, do it, man. Like I think Sea of Thieves was a big hit mm. on X uh, on PlayStation. Yeah, it has been. Well, yeah, so. yeah. Mm. yeah. But like, do it. Like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Absolutely. Yeah. I was. I was so. Um, I was so close to buying Hi-Fi Rush. Because it's on sale oh, yeah. for like sixteen oh, pounds. Oh, it comes to PlayStation. Yeah, it's come to PlayStation. It's on sale oh. for sixteen quid. I'm like, who gets this really money? Mm. Not, not the, the people developers who don't work exist on it. anymore. It ain't going to them for their next project yeah, in any way like at all. Some residuals or something like something. Um, but it's a good game for sixteen pounds. Absolutely. Um, I want to get back to that. It's one of the banes of my existence that I never finished that because I got. Mm. Well, probably a third of the way in. I, I, I'm definitely going to like restart that and go back to it. Mm. Yeah. It's it it's great. It's so good. I'd recommend it, absolutely. Um, cool. Hopefully, yeah, the developer well, gets some of that. But, but I like, don't know how. Yeah, they don't exist. Of the, yeah. Um, most I, of these games, like PlayStation and Xbox, popped in most of it anyway, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it's interesting, like, PlayStation seems to be the home of remakes, to be fair. Um, but I ran through Halo last year or the year before. Uh, yeah, you when, I had, Halo. when I had the, the PC. Halo guy here. Oh, that's Game why Pass. I wanted to bring up the topic. Um, yeah, and, and <laughs> I, you know, I, I think the only one I didn't play was Reach, which I don't think was on PC Game Pass I think when I, I played it because it's not part of the, like, bundle of, of games, oh. ultimately. Um, because I was trying I to play them all through in, in, in order. Um, what have I? So I mean, I've done one, two, three, ODST, uh, and five. Now, um, five or whatever the newest one that came out like you two or three years ago. Infinite. Was. Infinite. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That yeah, grapple yeah, yeah. did nothing for me, and I'm very disappointed. Um, and then I just gave it up after like six hours. I mean, it's but it, it, it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because boring. like. Halo is like, here's Master Chief, here's a new story that no one really gives a shit about. People are just here to fucking beat the shit out of some aliens. No, Master yeah. Chief is an amazing, super important protagonist that everyone in the world cares about. Yeah, I just didn't care for like, the open world of it. Um, that game came and went. Everyone was like, this is the greatest thing ever and just fell off a cliff. Um, especially well, the, the multiplayer. The multiplayer was late. The what Was it the Forge? Halo Forge? 
um, didn't yeah, come to the game. Um, yep. They didn't bring out, or maybe they brought out incredibly late, like Couch Co-op, which they said they were going to. There was a DLC, um, some extra single-player content, which I think probably got dropped. Um, it was announced and has just never appeared. Um, so that, that game was kind of just put out and yeah. just let Shame. very, very slowly die. Yeah, because everyone had really positive, um, you know, uh, things to say about it, and yeah, that I think that's the most bizarre thing Xbox have done mm. in like the last decade, where they let Halo, which everyone was like very concerned about, because it took so long to come out, they delayed it with the release of their new box, and and yet it came out and it was a hit and it was very good and. Uh, yeah. they just let it wither on the vine. Mm-hmm. It's just insane to me. Why would you do that? Especially like the the investment that was obviously put into that game, you know, financially mm. and in terms of time. Just let it die. It's, it's, it's insane. That, that's just so insane to me. I forgot about that. Um, more insane than anything they've, they've done. Mm. Like, you know, you can understand buying Activision for stupid money. Can't understand letting Halo uh, just die like that when it was actually good. Um, Crazy. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I just d- put all your eggs into the Gears basket, please, because that's a much better franchise. Mate, in my d- opinion. Like, Halo Infinite came out in 2021, right at the end mm-hmm. of 2021. Um, so sort of two and a half-ish years ago mm. now. There was like um, further to get on the multiplayer, there was like people playing it, it was like Apex Legends level, like kind of oh, I want to play this, I want to you know, and then I'm just like yeah, in there. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Whereas shifting maybe two gears um, yeah, Microsoft's got a lot of franchises they can kind of pull from you know okay similar in protagonist kind of wise halo and gears you know big no. buff shooter man marcus um, phoenix is way better than john john halo his name is mm-hmm. yeah um but but gears <laughs> yeah. the last gears game gears 5 was 2019 i was like i, I forgot gears was, was a thing good. to be honest Good. There was there's tactics came out and then something called oh, Gears yeah. Five Hive Busters, which came out in twenty twenty. I think that was a DLC for five, yeah. Ah right. I okay. think it was like full on like expansion though. I forgot to play that. Damn it. Mm. There you go. Well, Gears is so good. Go back to Game Pass, mate. I'm sure it's there. Yeah, it will be on there. Yeah. Maybe. It's just um, wasn't there like a chibi version of Gears yeah. coming as well? Pop pop Funko pop thingy and that got shut down probably within the same week. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's Perfect like years. big, big franchises at Microsoft just seem to be not necessarily forgotten, but just never really like hyped up. It's a, it's a weird mm. marketing strategy to be like, we've got these massive franchises, we're just gonna be very quiet about them for yeah. a very long time, and then here's a game. Hooray, oh, yeah. Well. I don't care. As long as it's on Game Pass Day 1. (laughs) (laughs) They should shadow drop Gears 6. Gears 6 just And then I'll lose my mind. Or on on Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. That's what they lead with in the um, the Xbox showcase. Exactly. Just a big Gear 6 trailer is available. Now, motherfuckers. I'd love that. I love Gears. It's so good. It's their best franchise. I I don't even know what other franchises Microsoft would push at this. Point. Microsoft Fable. Oh, they have yeah. Fable. That's I don't true. know if that new game is ever going to come out, but they have Fable. Is that Fable Four now, or just Fable Infinite? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fable Forever. Fable Happily Ever After. Fable's um, great. Fable's a great game. First two. Yeah, games I, I like are, Fable, really good Fable games. I even like Three. Three was fine. I don't um, think I played Three. Um, it was alright. I, don't remember I think it did, the dog actually. was in free as well. So yeah, I, rec- <laughs> I recognised the cover, but maybe I just recognised the cover rather than I've actually yeah. played it. Mm. Mm. Fable yeah, Fortune. Uh, is that the name of the new one? Uh, that came out. No, that came out in 2017. That was oh, it was a digital. Co- wow, I didn't hear about this. It's a free-to-play digital it's collectible card game. card game set in the Fable <laughs> universe. It's Xbox magic. and Windows 2018. Womp womp. Uh, the it's being shut down already. Yeah, they're yep, It's on Steam. 
but is it's it? no longer available on the Steam Store. Yeah, I was going to say. So you can but find the page. New Fable. Same as do Fable anything. Legends. Yeah. New Fable is supposed to be uh, potentially a reboot. I would enjoy okay. that, to be honest. Yeah, like, I think yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, 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 I'm not massive into fantasy, but Fable was one of those games where it was like, this is good enough. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I'd play that, especially Game Pass. Yeah. Oh, that Hellblade game came out. Oh yes. Oh yeah, I've heard Hellblade nothing about things. Are you in that Ben? Um, um, I, mean, I, I, I am. Re- I think there's across the board people like it's terrible. People, well, not terrible. It's just not but living like, up to what. Not, yeah, probably meh is probably the right word. And people are like this is really good, and hmm. I want to uh, see I... those nice Scandinavian rocks. And say it's really <laughs> very, very lifelike. I think that's the the mm-hmm. redeeming feature of, of Hellblade yeah. Two, isn't it? The I'll actual um, visuals that it presents. Yes. Um, I am interested in Hellblade Two, but Hellblade One is a incredibly cerebral experience um that Mm -hmm. i think by the time i'd finished it i'm like oh my like i'm sweating i feel so fucking just put upon Mm. through this entire experience and it's great like as an experience this is i've had nothing like this from from any other game but i don't know if i ever want to play this game or another one like this again i remember you said basically the same thing right when you finished it yeah, yeah. And, and reading reading some reviews some of it some of them are like it's the same game it's you know it's it's it does stuff, but it's made yeah. combat slightly simpler. They've taken some like UI elements away to try and immerse you a little bit more. Um, and everything I kind of read about it was like, I don't want to, to play this game. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't want that fucking hardcore experience anymore. I've done it once. Yeah. I just I don't need it again. Yeah, like I I didn't enjoy it for those reasons where it, because it was just well, like this is not enjoyable and it's not meant to be enjoyable. Mm. <laughs> and I was just like. You know, you leaned into that, whereas I was just like, "Now nah, I'm good." Um, so, so yeah, I just want to see those pretty rocks. Um, I will fire it up. And see some sweat back. on a body. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'll I'll have to uh, delete every game I own off my uh, hard drive probably, <laughs> and then install it <laughs> um, to see the rocks in their splendor rather than playing it on cloud. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'll look at the rocks. I'll look at the rocks, and then. Yeah, I think the fact that people have said it's very much like the first game, that's... I respected the hell about the first Mm -hmm. game. Um, But yeah, I think maybe if the first game was like one hour (laughs) or two hours, that would have worked for me, but... um... Apparently, this one is shorter, but well, this yeah. so, so again, this one is shorter. But one of the criticisms I did uh, read was that it has like four endings. It gets to the point you're like, "Cool, the game could have ended here," and it just oh. goes on. And then like, "Cool, the game could have ended here," but it goes on again. That can't. Um, and that's not good if it's short. That's good if it's well. That's a thing if it's long that you can like or not like. Mm. But if it's short, then that means. Mm, mm. The way you get these potential endings is you are post climax and in crescendo, and you're choosing when to wrap up. But if it's a short game and there's four of these, that means there's a lot of game post climax, right? That's not ideal. Mm. I don't know. You'd probably have to play it and see to figure out what the hell's going on with that thing. Um, mm. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 I'm intrigued. Um, I'm intrigued. Like the first game, I, I was very intrigued by that, mm. um, and I'm intrigued by this. And yeah, well, d- let us know if you fire it up and what the what the rocks are like. Mm. Um, yeah, that's yeah. literally all the all I want to see. I just want to see how pretty it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I generally don't even want to play it. I just want to see how pretty it is. It's like it's like Rise. I, I think I think because I actually really liked, you know, Rise, Son of Rome, and yeah, mm. um, it was the Order. Um, they came around. Well, the order was slightly later, but they, they, you know, they were both like, "Look how pretty our game is." Mm. Um, and I enjoyed those games. Oh, you know? I, I, I enjoyed the order. I didn't. I never played yeah, uh, Rise, decent. but yeah, I enjoyed the order. Rise is, is the... like the same level, decent gameplay, very cinematic, very pretty. The order yeah. was. I think I preferred Rise over the, the order, okay. but like they're both like basically the same level. It's like. It's pick your poison. Mm. There's no mm. difference between the two. Right? Practically, I think I just enjoyed Rise, uh, the setting, 
probably that, more than anything. Like, is the Order you're talking about but, Order 1886 the werewolf thing? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah werewolf, that was a cool uh, setting, yeah. you know? Um, well, you're, cool. you're kind of Arthurian knights who have managed to live mm-hmm. through hundreds of years essentially yeah um and obviously new weapons and different inventors that you've gone to and stuff and stuff like that it's like a really cool setting for yeah. for, for stuff right. to happen in and i think for it to then you know it's it's boiled down to it's a cover shooter mm. yes it is a cover shooter and you go into cover and you shoot things through the kind of eight yeah. hour or so experience but as one of the early ps4 games it, it, mm-hmm. it, it's nearly 10 years old 2015 it came out right um it it looks it fucking phenomenal yeah yeah they did they did at the time and like i've played rise within the last two three years just for like game pass achievements mm. Um, mm. uh rewards points and that still looks great um obviously they've updated it because of like you know, the Xbox hardware just automatically uh, upscales. upreses things. Yeah, upscales. Um, so, yeah, it, but it does look really good. I think, yeah, I think the, the cover shooting and uh, the order was a little less satisfying than, like, the hack and slash in Rise. But as I say, they're, they're basically interchangeable in, mm. in, like, the whole everything that surrounded them, like, sort yeah. of, like, their release date, their, you know, how... How they were maligned because of the length and um, you know stuff like that, but yeah, both really decent games. I miss mm. games that were like B level quality. Um, yeah, uh, Ready at Dawn's like, always yeah. been an interesting studio who, who made the order, mm-hmm. and they always set them up to be a, like a PlayStation acquisition. You know, they've made God of War games. They put out the order as an exclusive PS PS4 game. Mm. Um, I, I wonder if if the, the critical reception because the order didn't get the best review scores and, and, no, and very and was, good kind um, of reception when it first came out. I think it's a, it was so more disappointing of a as well that it, mm. because it was like everyone's thinking, oh this is the uh this is you know the other this is gonna kill the Xbox mm. because we have uh, Order eighteen eighty six and then it got delayed because it didn't come out for release and Yeah. And then everyone's like, this is way too short and the gameplay isn't the best, but it's it's serviceable and it's like it's decent. So but, um, they yeah. Xbox put a game out like that every week now. So mm. it's like it's just <laughs> like you know, it's like you, God. The, uh, maybe the our standards have dropped. Ready at Dawn shifted shortly after the order came out to basically be an Oculus developer. Yes. Yeah. They went I didn't realize that, but sure. like, yeah, they've literally they put out a multi-platform thing called Deformers. And then four virtual VR games of the Lone Echo uh-huh. series: Lone Echo, Echo Reno, Echo Combat, and Lone Echo Two. Last mm. uh, October twenty twenty one was their last release. Oh, wow. Okay. I wonder what they're doing there. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. They have a, a part of their website called Dev Talks. Oh, um, hilarious! Which no, hasn't been updated since twenty eighteen. <sighs> So, I, I have actually, I said that I wonder what they're doing now. I'm on their Wikipedia page, and uh, January 2023, they announced that they were shutting down Echo VR to focus oh. on future projects. So now everything they've done since okay. 2018 is being wound down. And in April 2023, huge layoffs. A third of the company was laid off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially if you haven't put out a game in a while. Yeah, Even if you have. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Even tough. if you put out a critically... <laughs> And publicly embraced game. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh dear. Oh well. Um let's finish there. Yeah. Well, I've got a bit of a down note. But you no, rolling let's bring into it up. A, no, yeah, rolling into an up. amazing weekend with Bristol Crap if it's all oh, I was just oh, saying, coming okay. up. Here, here's the thing. I have my entire Steam library and a train journey where the amount of work I have to do because I'm no post marking and letting myself recoup some of the hours i had to work on weekends and stuff mm-hmm. um what should i play on the train what is your ideal st- you know my steam library is ginormous uh yes. i can, al- I can also play dark. epic and good old games games but what would you what would you want me to play good on the game train? Games. what's the re- how how what time's your train what time are you getting on it i'm getting what on the train at eight fifty three, and i'm arriving at one thirty. so so you'll be fresh you'll be fresh um, you'll have had time to wake up. 
Yep. I can also like wake up on part of the journey and then for three hours. Well, that true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. Just five well, hours of uh, Bellatro. Yeah. Um I mean, doesn't sound bad. Uh, into the breach. Oh, I I have Ooh. I never finished that game actually. I don't think I ever finished it, but I've played a lot of time with it. Um and uh what's it called? Metal Slug Tactics. Oh new trailer came out for that, that looks good. Nice. Um, I don't know that. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's that. Um, it's meant you to still be coming out this year, right? I know what Ben's going to tell me. I'm going to play Capes. Yes, yes, you should. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, absolutely. Uh, but um, you picked up um, uh, Persona Three. Yep. As well. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how far have a conversation you conversation in that. I mean, yeah, five hours time. in that game seems like yeah, a bit of a drop in the ocean, bubble. doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but, oh, it's several but, yeah. dialogue bubbles. It's just <laughs> yeah. not actually anything Pro- outside of dialogue. Bubbles. It seems like you'd make. An amount of progress that seems, mm. you know, seems Reasonable. okay. Yeah. Mm. What What have you bought recently? The game that's free on uh, Epic as of today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that one. Uh, and the reason I why, something... so the reason I can't play that game journey. is because I need to be reviewing Capes, the non-branded XCOM. <laughs> <laughs> strategy superhero game. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because three hours is not a long time. It's one of those. To... Yeah, I mean, for a tactics game, it's actually not. A, it's a good shout, actually. I because um, mm-hmm. one of the things that it was one of those things where because of all the marking stuff, I I didn't I didn't know when I could have a chunk of time to properly review the game. And that that type of game, it's really hard to do like in small bursts when you're first learning mm. it to really understand mm. the game. I think if I was just picking it up, putting it down just for funsies, I would have played a bunch by now. But um, to like properly get a feel for the mechanics, you kind of have to get a little dug in. So yeah, maybe that that's a really good idea. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Nice. nice. Good. Outsourcing well, decision making. Not gonna... <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's a good idea. Um, uh, just play into the breach. No. <laughs> Let's jump back into some beers. Uh, Lucy, we'll come to you first mm. for the stout. Yeah, I imagine I'm, all of I'm our beers were finished, finished quite a while ago, so whether we remember any. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I literally just had the last sip um, ah. uh, a, few, a few minutes ago. So, so yeah, it was uh, it was just really good. I, I, I'm in a mm. zen, chilled uh, place now. Um, nice. Yeah, the 11%, um, I think you know, very good for like a free thirty mil can. Um, I mean, I drink any quantities and amount of this beer because it tastes very good. But this mm. is just like okay, this is in my sweet spot where I'm not just going to be like completely KO'd <laughs> after this uh, <laughs> podcast. I can still function. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, it's really good. Um, and silly me, uh, had all the different breweries around the. Just under the uh, like nice, yep. The eight different ones, mm. um, but but yeah, it's it. It was a big stout, but not too big. It was big in the sense that like this is just doing what it needs to do, and it's very accomplished. It's very well balanced. It's very, uh, you know, these are obviously like like speaker brew yacht, but the the collaborators are just like. You know, cream of the crop. They know what they're doing as well. So it's like it, it could have been mm. like too many, too many cooks, but it's mm. like no, they went the complete opposite direction and paired it back and just made a, you know, really satisfying like old school stout where it's like yes, we're gonna have lots of you know roasted malts and chocolate and you know uh, that that little bit of smokiness was just you know really nice and just enveloped everything in a really nice package but i'm just gonna make it bitter as well <laughs> like yeah nice. how god intended um <laughs> so it's really good really good um i mean i'll have any big stout from brew york it's a, you know spoilers i like a stout from brew york who could have thought <laughs> the day i come on here <laughs> and don't like a stout from brew york is is the day the world ends um, 
hell hell will have you know opened up and four horsemen of the apocalypse and yeah i I was gonna say i hope that isn't a a, a indication of things to come um (laughs) i um i'll jump onto the verdant um yeah i I don't think it my palate took any more in because i'm bunged up and stuff Mm -hmm. but it's a very nice beer uh, I drank it very, very easily. The, the, the bitterness did lighten, I suppose, kind of like through uh, through the beer. So about halfway, that, that kind of, I said there's sort of like peaks and troughs uh, in that kind of initial flavour that, that dips down into a sort of a bitter flavour. That, that kind of, that trough got higher and higher, I think, as the flavour across the beer just sort of levelled out a little bit. Um, so you were getting a consistent, sort of almost singular kind of flavour mm. throughout. Mm-hmm. But again, head cold, yeah. full of crap. So uh, I may be getting not a fantastic uh, uh, read on the on the beer, but I enjoyed it enough to bang it back pretty quickly. Um, so yeah. Nice. Uh, my second rodeo from Verdant. Uh, and Adol. We'll I like that name. Yeah, it's a good name. Um, <laughs> this is also a good beer. Um, I don't think I have much else to report. I think uh did what I... Uh, continued to do what I, I said I did. I think the, the that sort of breakthrough where I got a little more of the bitterness coming on, uh, I think that was the major shift and I made it very even more enjoyable and sessionable. Uh, definitely one... Um, now that um, if my current medication has made me more uh, susceptible to, to alcohol and its effects in the mornings afterwards, mm. uh, looking at a, no, a low ABV beer that I could easily have a few of sounds like a great thing to keep track of. Yeah, yeah, nice. Good, good. Um, okay, let's finish there for this week then. Uh, you can get us on the socials at Tanked Up Cast. I'm at Nova underscore 47. Lucy is... Tired, but at Juicy Loose Nine. Uh, and Adel is... At the Omniarch. Um, if you're coming through Discord, send a message as well. I've had a couple of friend requests on Discord. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, mutual servers, but but no nothing, like just pending requests. And when you look at those mutual servers, they haven't said anything within the mutual servers uh so are they shy or are they bots trying to steal everything from me Mm. i don't know send a message or something when you want to add people Mm. to services and platforms and things like that um but also go to outlives.net as well comment on some of the posts comment on the the outlives post if you're coming through us uh in that sort of way or on youtube as well we can see the beers that we have been drinking uh i believe that's everything uh, the places that we inhabit online uh, remember google podcast is is ending you have to shift to mm. something oh. else uh, whether that's youtube overcast. or spotify or overcast mm-hmm. or mm. uh, pocket cast or whatever you you use which ultimately is no longer google podcasts or itunes because no one uses either of those things yeah. uh, anymore yeah iTunes um, sucks. yeah no i really dislike uh, iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just the thing we were talking about. Sure. Yeah. I thought we were going to go somewhere slightly different, but no, because um, I think I did like a free trial for this was a while ago for like, is it called iTunes Music or something like that? Yeah. Right. And it's like you can't listen to like your own music <laughs> or something. I think you can, but you, but you got all like the. I think it pulls from like the cloud. Um, all the mm. um, actual songs on like I- iTunes Music. It's like, oh, I what's on my I'm playing LL Cool J Phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that pulls the actual uh, version that they have uh, from the cloud. And then there was something else where it's like I couldn't sync my music or something like that because it's like you need to you you can only use our music for this, and it's like. Yep. If I'm signing up, let me have access to my crap. And, um, and your crap. <laughs> yes. Don't block me out. So I'm very angry. Mm. Um, yeah, iTunes yeah. has always been a bit shit. You were okay sort of back in that day, sense. but I'm oh, iTunes, like 2005. But <laughs> so yeah, that absolutely, was a while absolutely. ago. Um, the, the, my first year of uni, where I was on a 
shared network with about a thousand, multiple thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And there was an iTunes plugin which basically could read everyone else's iTunes library and download any of the songs. So it was like a peer to peer sharing thing without them even knowing about it. So I'm like, I mean, (laughs) a similar kind of thing, but ultimately just, just went into the network. Like, cool, I will have that album off of that person. Mm-hmm. I will have that album off oh, of that person. So and just you could just download straight from their PCs. Yeah. Big security issues. It didn't last very long. I was going to say. No, but I, I, no, I got a yeah. massive music library in my first year of uni where yeah, I was just taking my, music my, from people. My music library is still from literally like 2004 or five. Like Sweet. burning CDs and mm. getting it off like, you Monday. know, USB drives and li- obviously LimeWire. Um, so, Naps yeah. the mate. Maps though, Mar- uh, Metallica's favourite. Yes, and Maps. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, cool. Let's finish there for Good. this week. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. We have been tanked up and we'll catch you soon. Goodbye. T- technology sucks now. Bye. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>